One of my earliest clear memories as a child, not the ones that are little snapshot moments when you know that you were there for something at Christmas or at Thanksgiving, but you don't remember the year or the context, you just know it was meaningful. The clear memory, when you know what was happening, when you remember pieces of it and it strings together in something coherent. One of my earliest such memories is walking precincts with my parents, walking and inviting people to vote for Bobby Kennedy. <clears throat> Democracy rule by the people only works if the people work, if they, if we make it work. And also in that same time frame, I relearned how devastating it is to have hope stolen away. To this day, seeing film of Bobby Kennedy or even reading about him causes tears to well up in my eyes and I can feel my throat go thick. The day he was assassinated, an America that might have been an America that was being born out of pain and anguish and struggle and bloodshed and hope was killed. It was stolen from all of us. It is a teaching of the Jewish faith that killing any person does that. Murder is the one crime that Judaism offers no hope of forgiveness for. Because to atone for any crime, any sin, requires a very real and honest effort to apologize to that person, to make amends to that person, to do what it takes to restore the injured in some way to get their forgiveness. And God's forgiveness only comes after you have truly made good on your crimes, your hurts, your injuries. Then God can forgive you for the offenses against God. But the harm to people comes first. When you kill a person, you've killed the only person who could forgive you. You cannot atone. You cannot make it better. Judaism teaches that killing a person, any person, kills a whole world. This past couple weeks, we have had world after world after world destroyed. Eleven Jews in worship at their temple in Pittsburgh. We will not forget. Two African Americans shopping at a grocery store in Kentucky by a white gunman who had just failed to get into the black church nearby because its doors were locked. We will not forget. Two people at a yoga studio in Tallahassee. We will not forget. We will not forget. And we cannot forgive because it's not ours to forgive. There are other such crimes. Our news is so full of shocks and insults and evil absurdities that we know somehow are less newsworthy, but no less appalling. Every day, every day, there are gun murders in America. Almost every day, there are mass murders with guns in America. So many worlds destroyed. Destroyed by hate, by people whose hatred is fanned into flames by the rhetoric of people in power. By clergy, I am sad to say, speaking of killing people whom God hates, which is a terrible lie. For we are a people whose tradition reaffirms that God loves everyone.
absolutely, unequivocally, everyone. Even somehow the people that we cannot ourselves imagine any way to love because of their malice, their hatred, their cruelty. God, we are told, still loves them. And so many worlds are destroyed by our politicians, our president, senators, representatives, with words that belittle and demonize and dehumanize other people, that encourage angry, deranged people armed with weapons of war to go and kill other people, to kill other Americans, to destroy worlds. We will not forget. And because we are a people who are religiously commuted, committed to the practice of democracy in all parts of our lives, you can take out your hardback hymnals and in one of those early pages, you will find, you will find the covenant between our congregations. Over a thousand congregations in this country and around the world commit to seven principles, and among them, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. This is our religious commitment. It is a promise we make to each other to affirm and promote that. Words and values mean nothing if we do not act on them. You are a people who covenanted, who promised faithfully to other people around this country and the world to uphold democracy. So on Tuesday, I expect you to go and vote. If you have the right to vote, go and vote. In New Hampshire, you can register on Election Day. So I expect you to go and vote, as good you use, voting your good you you values. And I am not telling you who to vote for. That would be wildly inappropriate. And it would piss off the IRS. <laughs> but I am telling you that you should vote your values, our shared values. What votes for what measures and candidates will uphold the worth and dignity of every person? What votes will encourage people to feel and be freest in their own spiritual journeys? What votes will uphold and strengthen democracy for all people? What votes will ensure that as many people as possible, all citizens, every last one, have the right and ability to vote, as well as easy access to their voting places? Our president, the Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, has spent much of the last week in Florida actively campaigning with other UUs and other people of faith to pass an amendment to that state's constitution so that 1.5 million people get their right to vote returned to them, a sacred right. 1.5 million people. It's about the population of New Hampshire. Entire worlds are being suppressed there, and our people are siding with love and justice, demanding that democracy be restored. What votes here will protect our rights? The rights of people of color, of religious minorities, of LGBTQ people, everyone's rights, and our safety here in New Hampshire. What votes will protect and restore the environment here and make air and water safer for everyone here? Those are our values, they are there in that covenant that we made. We promised to uphold and promote those things. We promise to act 
So vote our shared values. Promote those things. Elect people who will do that work. Entire worlds live or die because of what we do. Your vote matters. It matters because elections in this state have often been decided by a few votes. And the control of the Virginia legislature just recently rested on a tie in one district that was decided by drawing a name out of a hat. One vote would have made the difference not just in that one district, but in the entire state. Somebody didn't vote. Your vote matters. We are entrusted with democracy, this sacred thing here inside these walls. We are entrusted with this democracy, this state and nation's democracy. People who we knew and loved and people we don't know and will never know, never hear their names, but who acted in our best interests, fought for us, cared for us, who built all this, entrusted it to us. And today we are remembering, we are putting back together. I'm going to ask you to act. I invite you to find a couple people nearby. They don't need to be people you already know. It's okay either way. Speak to them, take turns, be brief. Tell them a little about someone who you love and miss, someone whose picture might be on this altar or might have been if you had a picture of them or if you had remembered it, if you had remembered it, as I did not this morning. Tell them who that person was, how they made the world better, what they struggled for, why you love and remember them today, and I will bring you back with a chime. Remember, be brief, take turns. And if you have time after everyone has shared, share again. We here sometimes speak of a cloud of witnesses, all those who have gone before us, our ancestors in this faith, the ancestors of this faith. They are mentioned and invoked for momentous occasions, ordinations, installations, building dedications, and so on. They are the beloved ghosts in the walls. And they are here today with us. Present with us, present in us. And all of those who you just spoke of to each other, they are present. You have invoked them. You have remembered them here with us. We are so full, far beyond the room's capacity. Don't tell the fire marshals. There are hundreds of people you invoked and thousands more who have been in some manner called here. Our beloved dead, so much love, so much care, so much affection, so many stories here, so much hope for a future that could be. So now, I invite you to speak the names of others, the dead you did not get to mention, the ones whose names came to you just when the chime rang, the ones whose loss or story is too sharp for you to share. And this is not a time for turn-taking. You need not wait on someone else to finish. Let your voices rise up. Speak their names. Let their names mix in a great chorus of memory and love. Perhaps they are family or friends. Perhaps they were mentors, teachers. Perhaps they are people you never met but are great heroes to you. They, too, are present with us in us. 
For them, we light one more candle. This one, our dead. We lit one more candle. We lit it for our shared memory, our shared love, for the hope that they all gave to us, for the hope that they all were, and for the hope that they still bring to the world. May we never forget them. May we too build worlds full of hope and love. May we always act to uphold our values and our commitments to each other. And may we too be remembered with such love and affection. May it be so.